stay in until you take them out. Welcome back. The baseball players have a new offer for the owners, and surprise, surprise, this one includes a tax plan. Yes, from the players. Some turning in a breakthrough, others just a public relations move. The players' counterproposal calls for a $58 million concession from the players, and part from taxes and part from gate revenue, a $30 million contribution to an industry growth fund, and a joint committee for community service, licensing, and marketing issues. We are very, very confident and uh, very optimistic that we have taken a large step and we really feel uh, we're looking forward to uh, seeing the, the owner's response. We are encouraged by their concerns about our mutual self-interest in growing the game and we welcome the prospects of a lasting relationship between the owners and the players. The owner's initial response was, we're not impressed, but they'll meet again Sunday or Monday to discuss it formally. Gary. Last March, Massachusetts figured to be Arkansas's biggest challenge on the way to the Final Four, but in the second round of the Midwest Regional, the Minutemen got stunned by Maryland and freshman sensation Joe Smith. Saturday afternoon, they journeyed into Joe's backyard, bent on revenge. In the Baltimore arena, there's Joe. He's familiar to the Minutemen now, but they still couldn't stop it. Hit 10 of 18 shots, works his way in the lane, scored 30. Crowd is pumped in Baltimore. Smith is pretty fired up himself. Lou Rowe was not. He was in foul trouble, scored just six points. But the D picked it up. Off the steal is Dana Dingle. Chavin! Minutemen with a big second half. Mike Williams will miss, got nothing but air, but picking him up is Dante Bright. And Lou Rowe. Is a little happier now. Despite that brick, Williams ended up with 18 and had a dozen of those in the second half. Three of UMass's four games have been against top 25 competition. In one of the year's best games, closing seconds, Michigan State against Nebraska gets something off. Tom Wald can't. Won't go. We got hammered by Eric Snow from long range. That means Judd Heathcote. He's going to get three free throws. They're down three. He hit the first two. Got to get this one. He got it. It's tied. Now on the inbound. Michigan State waiting to set something up. Don't want to run that half second off. Here comes Strickland to win it. Won't go. Tied at 80. We're headed to overtime. There, Eric Strickland found the mark. The long three in Nebraska upsets of 96-91. Despite 37 from Sean Respert, but he did hit just a, barely a third of his shots. As for his clutch free throws, Walt said, I was unconscious. I didn't even know the referee handed me the ball until the second one. Hey, Gary, we got some more scores for you. Number three, Arkansas gets 17 from Clint McDaniel as they beat Murray State. Turn. Glenn Robinson says the Bucks' losing streak stops here, but the one-time, three-time world champs have something to say about it. Where there's a will, oh, there's a way. Lakers Jazz. Nick Van Exel, sprained ankle out of the game. Who's going to take over? Sidell Freet, the veteran, against John Crotty. He loves playing this game. Sidell! Season high, 38. Lakers by nine at the half. In the third quarter, the rookie, Eddie Jones. Oh, hurt me! Lakers hold off a late run by the Jazz, and they win it. Sedell hits 13 of 19 from the floor. He also had eight assists. He entered the game averaging just over nine points a game. The Jazz have lost three straight at home. The Pistons all beat up. Lindsey Hunter, O. Miller on the injured list. Dumars didn't make the trip. Either did Grant Hill. The Cavs, not the healthiest team either, win behind Chris Mills, 17. Fab Five, Fab Three reunion. Weber, Jalen, and Jawan. McNichols are in a bullet. Snuggets. Bobby Pack down the pipe hard. Nuggets by four early. Then Weber. Oh, Weber over to Kembe. Second half. Jalen. Nifty little drive. The story was Mahmoud Abdul Raouf. Raouf. Raouf was on fire. Season high 31. Maki hits five threes. Jalen Rose scored a career-high 14, O'Weber 15 and 10. The Suns beat the Wolves, who play without Christian Leitner. Wesley Pershing, the Baby Rifle, scored 25. Possible tension between Bill Blair and Isaiah Ryder. Ryder. It's called a press conference for Monday. Gary. Christmas came early to Dennis Rodman. 
to his hair. Caught in the garish green he's going with his Christmas due, the Spurs' prodigal son returned to active status Saturday, but stayed in a Houston hotel. He's expected to play Monday when the Bullets come to San Antonio. In the meantime, it was Akeem the Dream against David and Sean Elliott. Stepping it up in Rodman's absence. Look at him blocking Olajuwon. Not usually part of his repertoire, but Elliott does do a lot of this. Baseline skying, he had 20. Big night for Avery Johnson. Everyone came to see the Admiral and the Dream. Instead, it was the guard play of A.J. who just takes it in himself. Spurs were burying him by 11 at the break. Then David got into it from A.J. Big old smile on his face as they win it easily. 108 to 96. Robinson now 12 and 10 head up with Akeem, but the league's number three score, 10 below his 20 point, 28 point average. Olajuwon was 10 of 24 from the floor. The Rockets hit just four of 21 in their trademark trace. Chuck Person alone, six of nine. Reunion Arena, the Mavs hosting the Hornets. Dick Mata trying to hide the ball and do a little teasing to Larry Johnson, the new father. Missed last night's game on the birth of his child. He was in there tonight watching Jamal Mashburn from Jason Kidd, who had his best assist night as a pro. Big run, Kidd spotting Jimmy Jackson underneath. Alan Bristow not happy with his team's effort. Popeye Jones doing a little Jason Kidd work himself, piping it into Jimmy Jackson. And the Mavs win it by a baker's dozen. Mata passes our own Dr. Jack Ramsey for third in the all-time coaching win list, but he does have a losing record. Alan Bristow observed, we got annihilated on the boards. Probably our softest effort in over two weeks. Bradley Center, Bucks and Bulls. Len Robinson would have his most significant night as a pro. Dish in the closing seconds. Great pass. And the big dog puts his team up by three. Late in the fourth. 4.4 seconds left. Scotty Pippen. Uh, I'm surprised it came that close. That was the decisive bucket. And the big dog gets some appreciation. Pippen hit just 8 of 22 shots. The Bulls fall back to 500. they They've won consecutive games only once this season. At Market Square, Reggie Miller equaled his season high with 33. The Pacers won their fifth straight. John Starks didn't start, didn't play all night long. That rally wouldn't explain it. Charles Smith helped out up front to tip in. Knicks trailed by five, but in the closing seconds, they were up when the Sixers' Willie Burton, who's been explosive since coming to the Heat, got called for the offensive. Could have tied it, a free throw could have gained the lead, but instead... That's what happens when you're in Madison Square Garden. Ewing had his best night of the season with 28. Derek Harper added 22, while Sean Bradley had 10 and fouled out. Across the river in the Meadowlands, the Nets had a player meeting on their four-game losing streak and took it out on the Celts as they hit their first 10 shots. We are back in a buck and a half. We'll take you through the divisional championships in college football, including how Dewan Miller helped his Broncos into the one AA final. Next on C-SPAN.